Hello my pixel people, I am the pixel monster and welcome to a quick kind of, it's not the kind of same video that I normally do and this is basically a overview on the crisis free open beta. It was released a couple of days ago when I've been playing quite a bit and I've got a few concerns and I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm thinking about the game at the moment and all that kind of good stuff to be honest. So yeah, let's get straight into it. First off guys, the first thing you're going to notice is the graphics look good. Right now, what you're seeing is running on minimum settings, apart from texture detail, which is all the way up on very high. And I still believe that even with everything on low, this is one of the greatest looking games on PC at this moment in time. And that is actually really quite surprising because the FPS I'm getting in this on a single 680, because I've got SLI disabled, is around 120. With SLI enabled, I'm getting around 180. So that's actually not too bad whatsoever. But there is a downside, and it's really strange, I've not really experienced this in other games, but even when I'm running between 60 and 120 FPS, I can feel considerable mouse lag, and I understand that this is beta, and beta is beta, which is beta, and this is going to be improved with performance increases and uh, optimizations later down the line. But overall, this is just one thing that I'm really, really concerned about. If they don't fix his performance issues and the mouse feels sluggish all the time, then I don't know. This game could take pretty much a nosedive, which is, a, is kind of a shame because the gameplay itself, let me just put it out there, guys. It's better than Crisis 2. It, it's, it's so much better than Crisis 2. It is unbelievable. I mean, the maps are quite decent. There are a few issues in the gameplay itself, but I mean, overall... It's just got a more epic feel. It's really hard to put your finger on it. It's not like you can just say, well, this is better and this is better and this is better, which means the game is better. No, it doesn't work like that. What, what I actually trying to say is the game overall has just got a more complete feel. I don't know what that is. It almost felt like Crisis 2 multiplayer was kind of tacked onto the end of Crisis 2. And it was decent. But this actually feels like a fully fledged multiplayer component and that's quite decent considering that this is actually an open beta um, on a funny side note this has actually been placed into the demo section of EA Origins so yeah it's one of those betas again guys it is a temporary demo basically so I'm not expecting masses to change but it does warn you in the options menu and everything that everything is beta and everything is subject to change and I think that's a positive note to take from all this I hope that they do improve quite a lot about the game especially the performance and when I say performance I'm not talking about FPS performance I'm talking about input lag I'm talking about latency performance because if a game feels floaty it kind of breaks your immersion. I don't know what it is. It's just really hard to stay on target. And it's not my aim. Trust me, guys. It is not my aim. But that aside, like I said, the game does look absolutely stunning. Even on uh, very low. And on the highest settings, the game looks very, very impressive. It, it's a strange kind of impressive. It's an impressive where if you take a screenshot, that screenshot will look like some of the best graphics you have ever seen in PC gaming. However, when you're playing the game, it does... I think, it, again, it comes down to the input latency and the feel of the game. But even with everything on maximum, I mean, and when everything looks really pretty, it doesn't seem to look as good as it does on low settings. A lot of this is because there's a lot of smoke effects and particle effects and post-process, which can kind of ruin the look of a game, in my opinion. But it is what a lot of people look forward to seeing, and it is kind of technically stunning. However, it doesn't make a big impact on the gameplay, so I would definitely recommend not having it on high for the multiplayer and to be honest if the input lag is the same on single player I am gonna say the same about single player I really do commend Crytek because it's really hard to see in this YouTube video it, it's virtually impossible but if you go and download the open beta yourself on PC and you've got a relatively good a relatively good computer then stick up the graphic settings and try it for yourself and it's really easy to say, well, it doesn't look as good as Crisis 1. It's debatable. I, I, I honestly believe that Crisis 1 looks a lot more realistic than even Crisis 3. But when it comes to technical excellence and what they've managed to achieve and some of the effects and the, the whole process pipeline of how the graphics are actually rendered, it is much better than the original Crisis. And performance-wise, FPS-wise at least, it's also very good. I'm kind of wondering what trickery is going on 
underneath the uh, hood to uh, cause this input lag, and it is a big frustration. But to be honest, guys, once you get above 120 FPS, the input lag is minimal. It, it, it's almost as good as most other games, but I have never, ever in my experience played a game at 60 FPS and still felt like my mouse is lagging unless V-Sync is on, and V-Sync is most definitely not on. And I am running on the 120Hz monitor as well. So, I, I, I don't know what that is, but there we go. Anyway, that's a lot of the boring technical stuff. So, let's talk about the gameplay and some stuff like that. So, basically, the game mode that we've got in the open beta is Crash Site, which is basically identical to the Crash Site in Crisis 2, where a alien pod lands somewhere on the map and you've got to defend it. And this was always quite cool. But one thing that they've changed quite a bit in Crisis 3 is there seems to be a lot more verticality to the actual arenas. And this is on both uh, the levels which are on the uh, open beta. There's a lot more vertical fighting, so there's a lot more being up high. And one of the issues is one of your skills is a ground pound where you jump up into the air and slam down to the ground. I don't know if there's much of it in this gameplay in particular, but I can... I can say for certainty in general it is becoming a massive frustration when you're guarding a point to have three or four invisible enemies just jump off a building and then ground pound you to death so i think there's a few little balance issues and tweaks that could be done maybe lowering the range of the ground stomp or lengthening the actual punishment for doing a ground stomp because right now you do the ground stomp and it is a second or two so if you do miss you are going to die but I'm thinking maybe lengthen it a little bit longer so it's not just the people that you tried to ground stomp that could kill you. If you, if you did pull that off, you're still going to get punished for basically doing a clean wipe. But right now it seems like the radius is almost the same size as the whole crash radius. So if you, if you just aim right close to the actual point, you, you're basically going to kill anybody that's waiting inside it. Another little interesting thing is the way that the energy works. It's, it's been changed quite a bit. It used to be just one energy bar and everything you did took away from the energy bar. I, I kind of like the idea, to be honest, because it kind of made you need to think about what you was doing. So you wouldn't use your nanovision all the time because you know that you might need to jump in a second. And you wouldn't use your shield because then you wanted to go into armor. What they've done this time around is they give all the individual skills that are on energy bar excluding movement movement is now no longer included so you can jump as much as you like which is a decent addition it lets you get around the map a lot faster i can tell you that much for a fact but in general now you can use your shield and then once your shields run out use your armor once your armors run out use your shield and I, I, i'm trying to say it's a good thing well no it, it is a good thing because all of a sudden now there's a lot more tactics involved it's not as simple as You've got to try and maintain your energy for when you get into a fight or decide to do something stealthy knowing that when you come out of stealth later down the line you're going to be punished. Because what it used to be like is if you were stealth and you was going into a crash site, as soon as you came out of stealth you'd have less than half your energy left which means that you couldn't use your shields. But you had the advantage of getting to the point where you got by using your stealth. This time around you can use your stealth and then... Even if you started shooting while you was in stealth, sure your stealth bar would collapse, but that doesn't matter because your armor bar would still be full. It's an interesting kind of balancing act, and I haven't played enough of the game right now to be able to tell you for a fact if this is something which is going to be a positive or a negative. I'm kind of liking the idea myself, but like I said, it's all subject to change. I think it could do with a little bit more tweaking because right now, you're finding a lot of people just hiding in the corner of the map stealthed and then if they do get found out and shot at they've still got a full armor bar with a sniper rifle and they're probably going to kill you anyway and the other issue is balance of the weapons when it comes to the shotguns in the beta the shotguns are kind of overpowered in many respects because um, this game mode is the only one where you get full access to your loadouts and I can tell you for a fact that if you're on a point all the enemy needs to do is to get a shotgun, run up to you in stealth. It's really hard to see stealth guys unless you go into nano vision. And nano vision doesn't feel as overpowered as it did in Crisis 2, in the Crisis 2 open beta at least, because um, your vision seems to be really distorted for a change. But anyway, so what happens is you go invisible, you run into the point, and then you start shooting, and then your arm will engage. And it'll be like a one-shot kill for you at close range. 
and your melee is really overpowered. It's two shots if they've got armor, one shot without armor, one shot in the back, it'll do a melee animation like in Battlefield. So, uh, weapon could really do with being balanced. And as you can see, guys, I got defeated, but I, I kind of stomped up the scoreboard, so I, I don't feel too bad. I feel like I tried my best, and my team let me down, so anybody who's on my team right now, and you're watching this, <laughs> please learn to play games better. And you get to see these little match analyst highlights at the end, which is also pretty cool. So for my opinions, guys, I'm going to finish it off by saying right now, Crisis 3 is kind of an interesting prospect to me. There's kind of a few things which are kind of bugging me and niggling at the back of my mind, which may make me not like the game when it actually comes out to a full release but right now i'd recommend that you go and try the open beta it's available on origin and i believe the consoles as well i've been the exogenesis don't forget to slap that subscribe button for some more pc gaming goodness and i'll catch you next time bye bye